Today we're going to be talking about the proper configuration of dip tubes and dispense heads on drums. This is important because the, the proper orientation and the proper configuration is very important to make sure that the slurry is properly prepared before it's removed from the drum to be used in the distribution system. In general, there's two ways to configure a drum. One is with separate feed and return, where the slurry is pulled out of one opening and returned to the other opening. And the other one is a combined feed and return, where the slurry is pulled out of one opening and returned to the same opening. In general, if you're going to do pump recirculation, using separate feed and return is the safest way to do it. You have the least amount of potential issues from slurry splashing or foaming, drying, etc. if you use separate feed and return dispense heads. Um, in some cases, uh, we can have a situation where you can have mechanical agitation in one side of the drum and a separate feed and return dispense head on the other side. Uh, that type of configuration is not uncommon. Um, However, you can't use that with a foaming slurry. Okay, the different types of dispense heads, we have some that are designed for separate feed and return. The dispense heads would be inserted into the dip tubes that are in the drum. The dispense head and dip tube combination that are used need to be suited for that particular drum design. Uh, typically, all of our slurry that's manufactured in a region use the same type of drum or the same size drum. Uh, if you have slurry that's coming from a different region of the world, say slurry that's being manufactured in Japan or Taiwan or Korea that's coming to the United States, then the drum design is going to be different, the bung opening is going to be different. We need to make sure that we fit the dip tube and dispense head that's going to be used with that slurry to match that particular drum design. The process of inserting a dip tube into a drum is a fairly simple one. The insert or dip tube is simply dropped into the drum and threaded into place. Um, in most cases, there's a tool that's used to tighten it appropriately. After that, the dispense head is inserted into the dip tube. In a lot of cases, there's some type of key coating present so you can't put the wrong drum or the wrong dip tube in, the, in place with the wrong dispense head. And then it's tightened to lock it in place and form a, a watertight seal or a slurry tight seal. And then after that, the slurry is recirculated in order to rehomogenize the solids concentration inside the drum. Once the drum has been emptied, the dip tube and dispense heads are removed from the drum so the next one can be moved into place. Um, the dispense head remains connected to the distribution system, so it's simply pulled off. It's connected by a, a transfer line, and it's moved out of the way. The dip tube is threaded out and removed. And at this point, it's very important that the, it gets cleaned out. Um, typically, just a DI water rinse or a flush in order to remove any wet slurry or residual that's on, on the outside of the dip tube. Um, if you don't do that, you have a tendency to build up solids drying on the outside of the dip tube, which can flake off, cause defect issues, and high LPCs in your slurry. Uh, one of the best practices that I've seen is to actually have three sets of dip tubes. So you have one that's in use, one that's on your standby drum, and a third set that's being cleaned. And when the Online drum comes offline, the dip tubes are removed and put into clean. The offline drum goes online and the clean dip tubes get inserted into the next drum that goes offline. One point that I wanted to make, and this is because it's been kind of a semi-common recurring theme that I've seen causing problems in the industry over the last 15 years, is some types of dispense heads are used as feed and return dispense heads when they're really not designed 
to be feed and re return dispense heads. Um, the Integris QC2 is a very, very common dispense head used in industry right now. Um, it's very well designed to be used as a single feed and a separate return dispense head. However, many people will try and use it as a feed and return in one. And the problems associated with that um, can cause a lot of issues with the slurry due to shear. The QC2 is designed with a three quarter inch feed line and a half inch return. In general, for all slurry, I recommend you have the same size feed and return ports on the dispense heads. Just because at this point, we're not trying to put shear into the slurry. In fact, with some of them, we're actively trying to avoid putting shear into the slurry. Um, by pulling out at a higher, higher volume and returning it through a smaller orifice, we're pressurizing the slurry. Um, it's being pushed through an orifice. It can contribute to shear damage. The other thing is, this particular dispense head was not designed to be a feed and return dispense head. So the path that the slurry takes when it's returning goes through some very small openings inside the dispense head, which are followed up by some also very small openings inside the dip tube. And that results in spraying and high velocity return of the slurry into the drum. I'll have an example for you that when we do our demonstration. Conversely, the QC3, which is a newer design from Integris, is perfectly designed for feed and return applications. It has a three quarter inch feed port, a three quarter inch return port, and a very open return path for the slurry to come back into the drum. And this open mesh allows the slurry to, to return to the drum without any added shear or added pressure drops across it, and it really avoids any of the issues. So, if you're gonna use an Integris dispense head for feed and return application, definitely use the QC3.